Hi everyone and welcome to a new Vintage Lens review, a very special one as well. If you follow Vintage Lens for video on social media, you probably know how much I love Soviet lenses with the Helios 44-2 being my all-time favorite vintage lens because this lens has bags of character that can't be matched by any other lens. Over the years, I've built quite a collection of these lenses, finishing up with a silver set because it looks as cool as the images it produces. But I knew that I will never have a full set of silver lenses because some of the Soviet lenses were made at the later stage in a black finish only. However, about a year ago, I learned about a company called Iron Glass, which sells Soviet lenses with various modifications, including a silver finish. I've had most of the lenses they sell already and I couldn't really afford to buy yet another set. But thankfully, after some back and forth, I've sent them a bunch of my own lenses for very special modifications. As you can see, the lenses I've sent them don't even look like a match set because some of them were already silver and other ones were black because Mir 20M and 11 a only came in black finish. So the first goal was to unify them in a silver finish and not only did iron glass make them all silver, they also polished them to make them as shiny as they could possibly be. So at least cosmetically, these lenses now look like a very nice match set. But much more importantly, I want to unify the look they produce. These lenses were made at different factories and different years, so they have different coatings which affect the colors of the images they produce. In order to unify that look, I've asked Iron Glass to paint the internal parts of this lens's amber which did feel like a very risky mod because I wasn't sure if that's gonna wash out the images or make them all orange. But thankfully the effect is very subtle, the images just became a bit warmer with some additional amber flares, which is the look I associate with Soviet lenses anyway, so this mod just enhanced that a bit further. More importantly, the whole set now feels much more like a match set at its core. But this is not all that I've had done to these lenses optically. In order to push the look even further, I've asked Iron Glass to add anamorphic bokeh discs, which transformed already beautiful bokeh that this lens produced into something that you expect to see when shooting with anamorphic lenses. Another characteristic that you expect to see with anamorphic lenses is the horizontal streak flare. In order to mimic that kind of flare, Iron Glass can add a vertical line in the middle of the bokeh disc and that will mimic that kind of flare, creating horizontal flares across the frame, but I decided not to have that done to my lenses because I felt it doesn't look very believable on longer focal lengths. But I did have it done to one of my lenses, Mir 20, and there's a very special reason why. Firstly, I think this mod works much better with wider lenses, creating much more believable, tasteful flares. Also, the Soviet lenses are very popular taking lenses for use with anamorphic adapters like my Panasonic LA 7200. But even with adapter like this that has great compatibility with wider lenses, it can't be used on anything as wide as 20 millimeter on full frame anyway. And there is nothing in anamorphic adapter wall that can match that field of view that you get from 20 millimeter. So while I can use this on tighter focal lengths, having the fake anamorphic flares on 20 millimeter will help me sell the look it produces when matching it with the real anamorphic shots. On the subject of usability, Apart from the additional lens hoods and unified step-up rings, you also get very nice metal full focus gears that feel like the extension of the original lens thanks to their polished metal look, solid feel and very pleasant to touch rounded off edges. Another very useful usability mod for me is the PL mount conversion. Originally this lens is had M42 screw mount, which has great compatibility, but it's not the most reliable mount out there because it doesn't really lock into place, resulting in occasional inconveniences, while PL mount is one of the most solid, reliable and stable mounts you can have on any lens, especially when using a follow focus. Of course, if PL mount is just not suitable for your needs and you want to use a speed booster, then there is an EF mount option as well, which seems to be a popular choice with other owners of such lenses that I've spoken to during my research. On top of everything I mentioned already, you get a nice bonus in a form of a carry case, which might not be the best case in the world, but it's certainly a welcome and a useful addition. In order to carry out the mods that I mentioned so far, Iron Glass had to take apart the lens completely, cleaning out all the optics and regressing all the rings in process. So the lenses I received back were actually so much cleaner and smoother than the ones I've sent to them. Of course, same goes for the lens that you buy directly from Iron Glass. 
the founder of the company, Vadim, reassured me that they always aim to source the best lenses that they can, avoiding any lenses that have big scratches or any other problems. In fact, over the last 10 months since receiving this set back from Iron Glass, I've had quite a few conversations with Vadim about what they do, their goals, the problems they're trying to solve. I used to think Iron Glass was just a one-man band, but turns out there's quite a team behind this brand who try to create the products that people actually want and need. I've been trying to advise them on what you guys might want to see next. And the results of that are actually coming very soon and I'm excited to share them with you when they become a reality. But for now, let's get back to this set. While everything that I said so far sounds pretty amazing, they are of course not perfect. While these modifications make them as usable for video as possible outside of full rehousings, at the core they are still the same quirky Soviet lenses with their own downsides in terms of image quality and construction. They won't really become any sharper, they won't really become any more solid other than having better mounts, nice gears and more interesting images which I mentioned already. But do these mods have their own downsides as well? Of course. For example, the silver finish makes lens markings very difficult to read in bright daylight, which will make your focus puller mad. But if you do your own focus pulling, it won't really affect you that much. I was willing to take this downside in order to have this super cool finish. But if this is too much for you and you need to see your lens markings very clearly, then you can of course go for the standard black finish as well. With the PL mount, as mentioned already, you can't use a speed booster with that. So if you're shooting with a smaller sensor camera like Micro Four Thirds, I would advise going for an EF mount instead and speed boosting that in order to get most out of these lenses. As for the optical modes, personally, I prefer the amber tint because I feel it complements these lenses very nicely. While the purple tint seems somewhat distracting to me, though it does make those fake anamorphic flares more believable, so this one is more down to the personal choice. With the oval aperture discs, while they do modify bokeh in an interesting way, they also block some of the light coming into the lens, making it darker. I usually stop down my lenses by a stop anyway, so for me this mod works fairly well. If you generally use your lenses wide open or try to get as much light into the lens as possible, then I would advise skipping that mod altogether. Overall though, I absolutely love these lenses. Nowadays, when I want to shoot something with a Soviet lens, I grab one of these because they are so much nicer to use and they also work very well as a match set. The lens that gets the most action though is the Mir 20M because I love using this lens on a gimbal. I get so many questions and compliments when I use this lens on shoots. It's a real lens conversation starter. So let's start our own conversation in the comment section below. I would love to know what you think about these lenses. I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. If you want to learn more about all of these lenses, I will have an additional write-up on vintagelensesforvideo.com. There will be a link below in the description for that. I will have additional info on all the individual lenses, useful links, as well as additional video examples of these lenses in action. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you want to see more similar content in the future, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel with the notification bell press so you are notified when a new Vintage Lens video comes out. Lastly, I want to thank you for sticking with me until the end of this video and I will see you in one of my next ones.